Hey everyone, Corey Janoff here, and today I wanted to talk about something that impacts everybody, and that is housing costs. And I wrote about this in a blog post back in July of this year, 2019, titled The Number One Predictor of Wealth Accumulation. We'll put a link to it here in the copy. But uh, I truly believe there is a direct correlation between the amount of money someone spends on housing and their ability to accumulate wealth and grow their net worth over time. And in working with people over the years, you know, I work with a lot of doctors, and one of the first things doctors want to do when they finish residency or fellowship and get into practice is buy that house, the nice new house um, that the attending doctors deserve to have after all their hard work uh, and training. And that's totally fine. Definitely want you to be able to purchase that home. But I also want you to be uh, aware of all of your other financial goals and priorities. If you spend a ton of money on a house, you know, that's a bunch of money that can't be spent elsewhere and directed towards other goals and priorities. So really encourage you before you dive into the, the big new home purchase in the nice school district and nice neighborhood with the extra bedroom so your family can stay with you when they come visit, really sit down and look at all of your financial goals and financial priorities. What else needs attention? Do we have student loans? Do we wanna set money aside for retirement? What age would we ultimately like to achieve financial independence? Do we wanna pay for kids to go to college? What are our childcare costs? And really look at what are all of our expenses, what are all of our goals and priorities, and then what could we reasonably afford to spend on a house which will still enable us to accomplish all of those other goals and priorities. And some of it might require some sacrifices. We may not be able to do everything or have everything that we want. So we might have to scale down or cut back or cut out certain things. And that's part of the fun of financial planning. But you know, as a general rule of thumb, I generally like people to keep their mortgage balance under two times their income. I've found that for most of the doctors I work with, with you know the usual goals that I just rattled off, student loan payments, that if you can keep the, the mortgage balance under two times your income, that will keep the monthly payments at a reasonable level and uh, at an affordable rate that you can still hopefully put enough money towards all of your other financial goals. So definitely encourage you to check out that blog post and uh, let me know your thoughts.